Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another fire account review. We've got a super homie from the chat, Chapulin, and he has a free to play account that is exactly one year old today. This guy has been pushing this account to the limit, using some really cool characters, building up some really good teams, and it's time to see just how cool this account is and just what you can get done in an entire year. I am blessed to be doing another really cool account like this. And hey, if you guys ever wanna hop in on an account review or be here during the stream, come through. But lads, let's get to it. Thank you, Choplin, for being a homie in the stream and for letting us review your account. Let's go. Ooh, I get dropped right into a date with Navia. Homies, as always, I love to get some background on the person whose account we're reviewing. This is Chapulin's free to play account. So he has a main account where he spent a little bit of money. He's been playing a long time, but he wanted to say he started this free to play account for two big reasons. The first one is to relive the Genshin lore. He didn't realize how fun and deep the Genshin lore was. The other big reason was he wanted to push the limits of having a free to play account. He wanted to prove that you do not need to spend money to accomplish anything in Genshin like 36 stars. So, you know what? Let's put that to the test. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the Spiral Abyss. And now it's time to see challenge summary. Ooh, look at all these 36 stars. Ooh, little trouble with the lectors there, buddy. His first ever 36 stars was in January, 2023. Congratulations, that is a very short amount of time to pull off the 36 stars. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there it is, proof. Today, as of recording, is October 8th, and God damn it, there you go. <laughs> okay, to the day, October 8th, that is today, 2023. It's always fun to start out an account review looking at what characters our homie actually has available. Let's see the five stars we are rocking here. We have Nahida, the absolute goat, so big respect to that. Yay, Lon. Okay. <laughs> Hyper Bloom Carry. Uh, Ryan Choke. Yep. All right. There we go. There's one team for the Abyss. Kazuha. Hu Tao. Dude, let's go. Mona and Kaching for standard banner characters. We've got bangers like Sucrose, Xing Cho, Bennett, Shang Ling, all the classic goats. And of course, the Princessin. All right. This screen is better to look at what characters our homie has available. We can see he doesn't actually have that many limited characters. Hu Tao, Yay, Lon, Raiden, Kazuha. Nikita. I wonder if our dude's gonna have some constellations on these characters, because that's not a lot. It's very, well, here, I'll let him tell. I asked him what kind of characters you like, what kind of team comps you like. He said he enjoys vertically investing in his account, revolving around Nikita, Hu Tao, and Raiden Shogun. If you guys don't know what vertical investment is, it pretty much means you are investing in certain characters a lot. So picking up their weapon, maybe picking up a C1 or any other constellations for them instead of deciding to grab multiple different characters. So it's vertically investing on those characters and not like spreading out all your primo gems for a lot of different team cards. Because he said the account revolves around Nahida, Hu Tao, and Raiden, let's check out those three right now. We've got Hu Tao. She is holding Dragon's Bane R5. Fantastic free to play weapon for Utao. Rocking Crimson Witch. C1. Dude, that's so cool. Look, everyone talks about how good C1 and Utao is. Free to play. You just be a little bit patient and you pick that shit up, baby. Let's go. Triple Crown. Dude, I don't even have Triple Crown Utao. I'm actually a fake Utao fan. Oh my God. This stat spread is honestly super good. Very high crit rate and very high crit damage. Keep in mind, Dragon's Bane does not give any form of crit. So to obtain stats this high are pretty crazy. We'll look at the artifacts later, but my God, that shit is bussin'. Let's take a look at Raiden Shogun now. So he didn't have Stavahoma. Did he go for Engulfing Lightning? It's gonna be the catch. Oh. This one guy. Emblem, let's go. C0, also triple crowns, my dude. Oh my God, he was not lying. 63 crit rate. I wish it was a little bit higher, but alas. Crit damage is great. Crap ton of ER. Beautiful Raiden Shogun, all things considered, my friend. Let's freaking go. The three Archons, you know, the Pyro Archon, Hu Tao, the Electro Archon, Raiden, and now the Dendro Archon, Nikita. Lord Frogs will know, Choplin, you know, he knows. Okay, here we go. Kagura is Verity. Ooh, 325 EM. Pretty good crit rate, massive crit damage. And then you don't really need a ER on Nikita. Dude, not bad. This is a big damage, Nahida. Holding deep wood, let's go. Constellation, zero as well. Talents, boom. Three characters, triple crown. And I mean, these are the characters that probably facilitate his whole account. Going into our dude's weapons, we've got R2, Skyward Heart. Holy, I mean, the refinement's cool, but as a free to play, 
I might have just kept two Skyward Harps. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Carver's Verity, fantastic. Engulfing Lightning, beautiful. Beacon of the Reed Sea, I respect it. I, I wonder if this was actually worth pulling on, but you know, man, you do you. Skyward Pride, probably didn't want that. And then, yo, the Nouvellet book. No, I just put the pieces together. My guy. Dude, your barber's gonna pop off to you. Respect. We've got Favbo, goaded. We've got Sack Frags, the catch. I see the Dragon's Bane. You've got Sapwood, which you can run on your Bennett. Lion's Roar for Kaching. Sack Swords, Fav Swords, Witsits. Dude, you've got all the, you've got all the bangers. Your Sack Bows aren't refined, but if you're not using Diona, it's not really high priority. Dude, the portable power saw? Get this shit up, bro. This is something I'll just bring up for my free to play homies who want some info. He has an Fav Lance right here, and then he has an R3 one. So it's like, why not take it to R4? Favonius weapons are so freaking valuable. Having multiple of them for two support characters to hold is almost always better than just one. I mean, check it right here. Our dude has two R3 Fav Swords. Obviously, this could have been an R5 and an R1. It's smart for certain weapons like this to keep multiple, especially Favonius ones. Hopefully my dude gets another fab bow in the future because there's so many characters that love fab bow. I don't see anything weird here with the weapons, my friend. Everything looks great. Um, but when we get into the characters, it'll be a little bit more clear if we need to level up some certain weapons. Anywho, we've already seen that this guy has great characters and we've seen he's cleared the abyss in just one year, but it's time to dive a little bit deeper. We looked at Hutao's stats already. They were absolutely beautiful. I want to see these artifacts because homie must have some juice in here. Boom. Ooh, Elemental Mastery roll beautiful piece oh my god 14 percent crit rate 11 percent crit rate. that piece is wild bro i thought it was illegal to have onset pyro goblins <sighs> that's not fair <laughs> 7 21 hpem those are perfect utah subs all right yo this guy's Utah is saucy. These are beautiful pieces. Nothing there needs to upgrade. Dude, if you got the staff of Homo with this, you'd lose a lot of EM, sure, but like, oh, the crit damage would blow through the roof, man. What a crazy account, bro. All right, let's check out Yalon. Holding the Favbo, love that. Emblem, C0, and the talents are very high. 64, 175. Honestly, that's more than enough crit to consistently get Fav procs. May affect your DPS a little bit, but this is a great Yalon, especially for one year. I hope you get some refinements soon, my friend. Let's take a look at these pieces just out of curiosity. HP, crit rate, crit damage. Love that. Same thing, crit rate, crit damage. We got an ER roll. HP sands, crit rate, crit damage. Look at these stats, bro. Hydro Goblet, crit rate, crit damage. He's getting it done, dude. Oh my God, and the crit damage piece. Yeah, this is the worst piece uh, I've seen so far, but it's it's on set. It gets the job done, dude. Great Elon, man. Great Elon. Shing Cho, the legend, level 90. Sack Sword R2, emblem as well. Constellation 6. Congratulations on that, man. Do one year and get the C6 Shing Cho. That's awesome. Talents are very high. Boom. 63. 154. Shing Cho's a character where it's kind of hard to get crit on him. No ascension stat, no weapon that boosts his crit with Fav or Sack Sword usually. Very nice. Would love to see the crit get a little bit higher in the future, but I mean, this is fantastic. Solid piece here. Pretty good CV. Not bad, man. I care. It's taken me so long to get a good attack sans on Emblem, so I respect that. Ooh, look at that piece. Not bad. 30 CV. Another on set with really good stats. Bruh, your free to play artifact luck is kind of crazy, dude. Uh, casual 28 cv circlet by the way my lord this guy's gaming let's go into toma he's holding fav lance love that on instructor okay that's a big dps support set instructor's cool but keep in mind it's four star so you you do just have a lot less base stats lower base hp lower crit stats whatever but you get the adm and then you give the party 120 EM. It's a very good set. You just gotta make sure you can overcome the lower base stats. C3, good talents. Actually really low elemental mastery. You know what, that's instructor for you. Fav Sword, Kazuha, love that. Viridus and Venner, Constance Zero. Talents are great. We'll just check if the homies on Triple EM. EM, EM, EM. Yo, a lot of attack rolls too. Okay, is this the highest? I guess it's on Viridus, isn't it? That's a cool piece. 65 EM, 787 elemental mastery, a little bit of crit for fab, never hurt nobody, and a lot of VR. Beautiful. We looked at Raiden Shogun's build, which looks very good. This crit rate on the catch would be fire, but on engulfing lightning, it is solid, but we'd like to get higher in the future. So let's take a look at these pieces. Attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, ER. Little bit of a Thanos piece. It's solid for sure. Oh my Lord, sheesh. 40 CV feather with attack percent. Beautiful. ER sands with a 
bunch of freaking crit stats. God damn, that's another 40 CD. Electro damage goblet. This is like my electro damage goblet. I get it. We got to make it work. It's surprisingly not too bad. And then the circlet. We've got crit rate, crit damage. So the sands is packing crit heat. Seven, that's only one crit roll. 6.6. That's only one crit roll. And the goblet has nothing. So to be honest, getting crit stats like this, with a few of those artifacts being a little bit not the best, is honestly very impressive. Lady Kaching. Now, I know this because Chapulin is around the stream all the time. He is a Kaching main on his main account. So let's see his free to play Kaching. Hmm? Boom. Weapons, Lion's Roar, R4. Yo, he went and got the four piece Stunning Fury. Great talents and pretty good, dude. Pretty good free to play Kaching here. Let's check the pieces. Ooh, -wee. that's a good flower. And that is a good feather. Look at all the element mastery on that. My God. Attack Sam. <laughs> Who is this guy? Okay, this goblet, uh, uh huh. But I mean, that's a great piece. 21% attack, 21. Can you do something for me? I'm gonna be dead ass here. Let me take a pause. Our dude said he vertically invests in his account, which usually lends players to have way better artifacts. Why? Because they can use their resin targeted into artifact domains more than players who don't vertically invest. If you're getting constantly new characters, you gotta get the talent materials. You gotta get the character ascension materials. You might need to farm a different artifact set until you get like something mediocre and then switch to the next character. But when you choose a small amount of five stars and you go in, you go crazy hard on just those domains that work for them, you get better pieces, plain and simple. So our dude's really showing what you can do if you focus up and have a plan. Let's check out Nahida. Oh my lord, 36 crit damage. God damn, doing his best Roger impression here, but mm, not that good. Elemental Mastery Sands with lots of great crit stats. Dendro Goblet on set, by the way. Crit rate with 23 crit damage. Man, beautiful Nahida. She gets more crit rate from her Elemental Mastery. It's one of her passives. So her crit rate at, with this is probably going up not too much, actually, probably about 60. So we could get some more crit rate here. If we could sacrifice some of the crit damage for more crit rate, it might help her out more, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because Nahida's just a goat. She's going to be applying a bunch of Dendro and just doing work anyway. So great Nahida, man. Sucrose holding four artifacts. Well, Rosaria, another Dragon's Bane. I respect it. There might be a better Lance here for Rosaria, and then you could continue to refine, but once again, the split is smart. Constellation 5. Hope you get that C6 one day, my friend. Yeah, and really high talents on Rosario. Yeah, this Rosario is great, man. Let's see how Balls is doing. Tokobo Shigure. Two-piece, two-piece. Constellation 1. Talents 3, 8, 9. Honestly, with how much elemental master you have, those are great crit stats, man. Kuki on Iron Sting with Flower of Paradise Lost. Homie, I respect this a lot. This is something I haven't even done yet. I don't want to go into the flop domain. I respect you for going out and farming it because, you know, Kuki deserves it. C2, huge Constellation for Kuki. Makes your skill last longer, lasting longer. Uh, lady. <laughs> Um, when the skill lasts longer, you know, you apply Hyper Bloom more often. 186 talents, very solid. The skill's the only one that really matters. All right, I've been excited to see this official holding the R2 Skyward Harp. My dude has went out and farmed Golden Troop already. Goaded set. You guys got to check out the Whale Project where I got myself some Golden Troop pieces at the cost of $277. And then we've got C1, fantastic. Talents, 298. Beautiful, my friend. Oh my Lord, look at that crit rate. I mean, I know Skyward Harp does a lot of work for that. These stats are very freaking good. My God, 90% crit, 165 crit damage. Dude, I gotta see these pieces. Big rolls there with the 44 elemental mastery. Love that. Oh my God. That's a good one right there. ER, attack percent roll, sheesh. Elemental mastery sand with crit rate, crit damage, good rolls. <laughs> On set, bro. Double crit start, bro. This guy's lucky as hell. Jokes aside, because I don't want this to all just boil down to this guy's lucky. It's the vertical investment thing. He knows where to farm. He's going to get good pieces. It's just facts if you keep doing it up. So he's smart. He's a smart guy, but he's also a lucky guy. Look at this piece. Sheesh. Dude, I think this is better than my visual. Beacon Beto at C6 with high talents. Homie doesn't quit. Almost 200 ER, 76, 160 on Beto. Wow, dude, let's go. Bennett's one of those builds I don't harp too hard on. It's very easy for him to be super good. We're on no bless. We're Constellation 6. He's chosen to activate that. Cool. 911. Really good crit damage, actually. This rivals my own Bennett in terms of like a, you know, sub DPS support Bennett. Good. Very nice. Attack percent says more crit. HP goblet. I respect it, but our dude is on the HP goblet. 
which means he's actually going to do a lot less damage. Solid Bennett, man. Great Bennett. Big heals. And then let's go into Strong Lane. She's going to be holding the catch because we got Engulfing Lightning on, right? More Emblem. C6. Big talent. Beautiful piece. Fire piece. This one makes me mad. I'm jealous about that one. Look at all that ER. This piece looks like a joke at first, but like... Characters like Shang Ling love this. And then just a pretty darn decent circlet to uh, wrap it up. Full enchilada, elemental mastery, cool. Crit rate is high enough with the catch, solid. Crit damage is great. And then energy recharge, let's freaking go. A instructor, so these stats I'm sure will be nothing fantastic. Black tassel, this is totally usable. You don't have to have crazy flashy build to make your characters work. Like Yaya's just that good. She's got HP, she's gonna be healing, she's gonna be helping out the team so not bad but that concludes the characters that our homie has leveled up if you have a second you should look at the emblem sands i'm not using <sighs> all right fine what 68 elemental mastery on top of like all that cb how did he do this bro we are in the presence of an emblem of severed fate disciple so what i like to do now is head into the party setup and kind of take a look at what teams they have and i want to see how many different teams i can build with the characters that our homie has available because that helps me recommend what characters or artifacts i should go into next look at all these team comps Rider national hyper bloom Utah hyper carry Virgin, we saw so many different team comps with such a small amount of characters. I think it's good to bring up. That's just how good some of these more versatile characters are. Characters like Yelan, Nikita, they work on so many different teams that you can just run so many different versatile meta teams. I don't think this is something new or revolutionary pull for good characters. You get good teams. This isn't rocket science. Our homie went into this account knowing he wanted a 36 star of the abyss as fast as he could so he pulled for meta characters it depends on how you're trying to have fun and what makes the game fun for you so hey pull for whatever characters you think are fun whether that's because they're strong or because they're cute or fun or hot or whatever you pull for this guy pulled specifically for strong characters and his account is thriving because of it so chocolate's account is very freaking good but he wasn't here just to flex he wanted to ask where should i take the account next i'm planning to get nouvellet but besides that, I'm actually not sure. Thank you for looking at my account. Homie, of course. Thank you for being a member of the community here on Twitch, Discord, everything. You're a homie. I am very happy to check out your account. So I think I've kind of narrowed down what I'd like to have you focus on, just as my advice. Look, it, it's crazy to say with how good some of your emblem pieces were. The sands are crazy. Most of the feathers are like good. There's a few like insane ones, but a lot of them are just like solid right and it was like characters like raiden's crit rate and uh shing cho's crit rate those things can get upgraded if you do want to continue to farm emblem it's so hard to tell somebody you have enough emblem or like your emblem pieces are good enough because like it's just that good of an artifact set viridescent venerer you have a lot of flowers here and feathers unfortunately we don't have a second elemental mastery sands we don't have an elemental mastery goblet at all and we only have one elemental mastery Circlet. So to get that sucrose up and running, we want a second Viridus Inventor full set. I think the Viridus Inventor is done. GG. You never have to go back to it when you are able to run two full four-piece Viridus Inventors because you're only going to ever need one on each side of the Abyss. I wish you the best of luck, but I do recommend you try and get that. The support sets, I think, are a little bit lacking such as Noblesse. Noblesse is that set that you can run on pretty much every support character in the game. They all love it. I'm talking Diona. I'm talking Bennett. I'm talking Kale. I'm talking Kujo Sara for your Raiden. All that kind of stuff. Things such as an energy recharge sand are going to benefit you a lot. If you could get a good HP goblet or pyro damage goblet, that'll help Bennett out a ton. Even a better crit rate piece, right? Or pieces with more ER just in general. So I think Strongboxing it a little bit more, hopefully getting more sets that you can run will benefit your account in the long term. Then you can go back to farming DPS. Finally, my recommendation for your characters. I think it's been a pattern throughout this whole video that you pulled some of the best five stars in the game. Homie said he's pulling for Nouvellet. That's gonna unlock a lot of fun for your account. I think you've got all the good team comps in the game unlocked. So it's up to you what five star you wanna pull for to have fun. But for the characters you have, who I might recommend leveling up. Diona, she provides a shield. I know you don't have Zhongli, so like she might actually help you out, but if you're getting along without her, so be it. Yon Fei with her C4 is a lot of fun too with the shield, but you've got Toma, so you may not even need that. I was about to recommend Kale, but I saw that my dude had Dendro Travel level 80. 
Dude, you're doing everything right. I feel like I can't exactly recommend too much. That isn't just me selfishly saying level up Yunjin because she's pretty. There you go, man. Don't say I never did anything for you. I just got you one primo gem. All right, homies, look, my account's really good. You guys may think that account's carrying me. Let's see what I can do on a one year free to play account. Generally, my guy's account is so busting, I don't think we're gonna have much trouble at all. Oh my God, I'm cringe. I know people are doubting. I know I could run better teams. I just want to use this one so that I don't have to change teams. And so I don't look like a... Yeah, I mean, this should do it. Can you guys come here? Oh my God, they're so annoyed. Oh, I got them both grouped. Oh, that was literally perfect. Okay, that was like an insane, that was like actually perfect. Getting the charge attacks on the big guys. All right, all right, all right. With full energy too. That took long enough. I'm, uh, you know, willing to admit not the best showing from your boy, but here we go. Yo, 140K burst. Ooh, on the burst. Uh-huh. Schleif. Let's go. Okay. Hey, homie, your account is great. Any time that that took extra was just because I was being lazy and not choosing the best teams because, I don't know, I'm stupid. But, dude, easy clap, man. Easy 36 stars. Let's go. Now, with that scuffed Abyss run over and done with, my friend, that concludes our account review of Choplin's one year exactly free to play account. This guy's account slaps, but keep in mind, he strategically pulled for some of the best characters in the entire game. Don't compare yourselves, you know, too hard to this account. This account's kind of try hard. Build the characters you want, but build them smart, farm the right artifacts, and homies, you guys will be 36 star in the Abyss after one year free to play, just like our dude here. So homies, thank you everybody for watching this video on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed because we're trying to hit 50K by the end of the year. It's gonna be tough, but hey, I believe. Shout out to everybody on Twitch. Homies, thank you guys for watching the stream, supporting the stream as you guys always do. I appreciate you guys very much. Much love. <laughs> Shout out to the patrons, everybody who supports your boy over on Patreon and get some sick rewards over there too. We've got Ken, Cloudy, Meow, 120, Sumi, Gophers. Thank you guys, everybody over there. I uh, appreciate you guys a lot. Lads, let's keep trucking along, having a great time in Fontaine. I will see you guys in the next Genshin video. Peace, everybody.